Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of TRB Collectibles. My name's Tom and I will be your guide through this estate sale. If you haven't guessed it by now, or are new to the channel, you can totally tell that media is one of my favorite categories. And it easily is. I love to resell it because it usually gives a consistent profit. Practically my bread and butter. At this estate sale, I went ahead and picked up one Blu-ray that I can easily sell for $15 plus shipping. Now based on the photos that I was seeing on estatesales.net, this estate was going to be a lot of everything. Practically, I'm going to have to dig my way through this house. The categories are endless, and there's stuff everywhere. Keep your eyes open. See what you can find, and let me know in the comments down below what you found that I might have missed. This is a tad bit random, but you can make money on vacuum cleaner bags. Yes, people still use vacuum cleaners that take bags. I'm not too sure why. It just depends. If you fall in love with a model of vacuum that you don't want to get rid of, it makes perfect sense. But people are looking for that old, new stock, meaning that bags that are not in production anymore, specifically for either Auric or Hoover vacuums. I've actually made some decent money in the past off of these bags if they're brand new sealed, so always keep your eye out because estate sale companies can't practically give it away. Now as we walk through the creepy basement, but not so creepy because they did light it up pretty well, but due to all the lights it was quite warm down here. There was a lot of stuff hanging from the ceiling. This person ran out of room on the walls and on the tables, so they decided to start strapping things to the rafters of the ceiling. And based on my height, I kept hitting my head on things because I wasn't necessarily paying attention to the items that are hanging from the rafters. I was more so looking at the things down below and subsequently walking into them. You'll see that quite often in this video. Are you afraid of the dark? Well, this person clearly was based on their collection of flashlights right here. I could understand that if the power goes out, you need a flashlight or two, but this just seems a little much. See, I told you I was going to bang my head on something. That's me not paying attention. I'd like to point out something unique and rather smart. Rather than losing their tools in a drawer, they put up some nails and actually drew the tools on some planks so this way they knew where exactly the tool was supposed to go back when it was finished being used. Smart! Something else I always find at estate sales, and I've seen them at many, people will nail and screw in jar lids to the rafters to save space on their desktop. So this way they can fill nuts and bolts and screws and little jars and screw them back up into the ceiling to save space. Except I have to avoid hitting them with my head. In the comments down below, let me know if you or a family member use these types of techniques, whether it be drawing tools on the wall to remember where they go or putting jars on the ceiling, or maybe another technique that was unique to them. Let me know. Did you see the additional flashlights? That's three more for the collection. Oh, 
Ah, uh, I'm so glad that I pulled this. I wanted to show it to you. It's not worth anything, but it does have sentimental value to me. It was one of my favorite PC games growing up, and that's Freddy Fish. If you ever played Freddy Fish or anything it related to it, like Putt-Putt, let me know down below some of your favorite games and what you remember. Did you know that most people will look left, look right, look down, but they'll never look up? It's always important to look up because you never know what's above your head, like this much mold. Ooh, that's gross. Let's get out of the closet. We now continue our estate sale journey no longer in the house, but in the vast expanse of the backyard. There were so many random items everywhere. You couldn't, like, nail down a specific category. But it also gave me post-apocalyptic vibes, kind of like I was playing Fallout 4, where at certain points I didn't know if I was actually going to find physical items based on the condition of everything that we're about to see. This isn't it. Just wait for it. We're going to continue our journey in just a moment. And I thought the blue truck was the end of the backyard, but I was mistaken. It's those white tented structures in the back. Did I really know what was back there? No. But did I need to find out? Of course. Let's go. We have more rundown sheds over to the right. I think one of them was a chicken coop at one point. These are very rundown, and I really didn't want to step into any of these, but. The ones over to the left look like former greenhouses, but they were filled with so many different materials I thought I was practically collecting raw material like you do in the Fallout video game. I didn't know if I was going to find anything in here, but I needed to continue on and see what we could find. This is what it should be doing. Oh look, a breaker box. And you know what? It probably is live. Am I going to stay in this tent too much longer? No. I think it's a former greenhouse, to be perfectly honest. But wait till you see what we find in the other greenhouse in just a moment. You'll never believe it. On what I believe is a greenhouse structure is a garage door. And look at that! It's a boat! This is where I was like... Am I in a video game or am I not? Do I need this boat as a resource to take on a lake somewhere? Because I wasn't sure who was going to buy this boat. It was in very, very poor condition. Uh, and it looks like it was left here a long, long time ago. As you can see, the tent is starting to fall in there. You know, making it all the way back here was just something in and of itself. I should definitely get an achievement just for that. Now, if you wanted to come to this estate sale and you were like, I need a snow plow, well, you are in luck. There's not only one, but two at this sale. It doesn't look like they're going to turn over anytime soon, and they've been sitting here as long as the boat. But if you needed one, they have it. At this point, I started to wonder what the story behind the sheds were. Did they start out with one and let it go, and it disintegrated? So then they bought another one and let that one go and let it disintegrate? and they kept going further and further into the backyard? Let me know what you think happened in the comments down below.
Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to click that like button. And if you have some extra time, check out some of these other episodes. Thanks! Thank you.